Hi, I'm Nikki. Welcome to my channel about learning game development. This is a video in a series dedicated to learning Unity's animation system. In the previous video, we broke down the five properties that make up Unity's animator component in order to understand how they all work. Today, we're going to take a deeper look at one of those five components, the animator controller. By the end of this video, we'll understand one of the simplest ways we can transition between animation states, Boolean values. Before we get going, if you're enjoying the series so far, please consider subscribing to the channel. Alright, let's get started. To ensure that everyone is up to speed, we left off the last video by setting our default animation state to our downloaded running state. When we press play, our character will continuously loop the running animation. Now getting our character to simply use the running animation was great, but wouldn't it be awesome if we could have control over the animations? The parameters tab in the left pane of the animator controller will help us do just that. Let's switch back to having idle as the default state and have a look at the parameters. When first opening this tab, Unity will have text stating the list is empty. To add a parameter, let's press the plus sign in the top right. Here we're presented with the four types of parameters that we can use to control the state machine. Float, int, bool, and trigger. A float is a number with a decimal, an int is a whole number, a boolean means true or false, and a trigger is also true or false, but Unity is programmed to handle a trigger a little differently than a boolean. Today we're going to focus on using booleans. Let's start by adding a boolean parameter and renaming it to isWalking. We'll expect our isWalking boolean to be true when a player presses forward and to be false when they stop. So at this point, our isWalking boolean does nothing. Pressing play will just loop the idle animation. How do we get from idle to walking? We can start by connecting the two animation states with what's known as a transition. Right click on the idle animation and select make transition, then press on the walk animation state to connect them. Let's press play to see what happens. We'll notice that the idle animation still plays, but if we wait long enough, our character transitions to the walk animation. So how can we use the boolean that we created to control which animation is currently active? Let's press on the transition and look at the inspector to see if we can find our answer to this question. From top to bottom, we'll see the name of the two animations tied to the transition, toggles for solo and mute, a space provided to rename the transition, a toggle for has exit time, a drop down menu titled settings, a timeline consisting of two animations, and finally, a menu titled Conditions. Let's start by renaming the transition to Start Walking, and then navigate to Conditions and press the plus button. Pressing this button will automatically create a new condition for the selected transition. Now, our newly titled Start Walking transition will be dependent on the Is Walking Boolean. And in order for our character to actually begin walking, our Boolean will need to be true. But how do we grant our player control over the value that the Boolean holds? The answer is code. In the hierarchy, we'll select our YBot character, navigate to add component and type in script to be presented with a new script option. Let's select it and title our new script animation state controller because this script will be in control of our active animation state. Give it a second and a new script will attach itself to the YBot. We'll then double click on the script to have our default IDE open so we can edit our code. If you don't have an IDE installed, I personally use Visual Studio and will link to where you can download it in the description. If this is your first time looking at code, welcome! That's super exciting! By default, we are always presented with two functions with a script generated by Unity, the start and the update function. The start function will be called, or occur, one time when the game object that we have the script attached to is instantiated, which in our case is immediately when pressing play. The update function occurs every single frame that the game is running and the game object that the script is attached to is active. Like we said before, we want to give players control over the boolean is walking. Now we know that is walking is a parameter and parameters are stored in our animator component. So in our script, we just need to create a reference pointing to the same animator component attached to the YBot and we'll gain access to the boolean via code. Let's do it. We'll first declare an animator reference variable so that when we search for the animator component, we have a place to keep it. Next, we'll use Unity's built-in getComponent function which searches through the game object that our script is attached to for whatever component we pass in as a parameter, in this case, animator. We'll do this in the start function so that we know that our animator reference variable will immediately refer to the animator the moment that our character is active. And now that we have this reference, we can use some of Unity's built-in functions to switch our boolean value between true and false given a player's input. In the update function, we'll check for when a player presses the W key meaning they want to move forward and our characters should start walking. 
Using one of Unity's built-in functions, input.getKey, we can pass in w as a parameter so that when w is pressed down, our isWalkingBoolean should be true. By accessing our animator reference, we can use the setBool function and set isWalking to true. Let's give this a shot. At first glance, it would appear that our code didn't work. But if we wait long enough, our character will begin walking. But why? The answer is simple. Returning to our transition, we'll notice that the has exit time toggle is selected by default. Has exit time means that a certain percentage of our active animation has to be completed before the transition is willing to move on to the next animation. Pressing on the settings dropdown will display even more information about the has exit time option. The first setting titled exit time is set with a default value of 0.97. This means that 97% of the animation has to be completed before the transition will occur, explaining why our character waited before starting to walk. Let's toggle has exit time, and we'll see that now when we press W, our character will begin walking immediately. We'll also notice that if we let go of W, our character keeps walking. At this point, we're missing two things, an additional transition and a little more code. Let's create the transition first by right-clicking on our walking animation state and connecting it to our idle animation state. Then toggle off has exit time and create a new condition. By default, our is walking boolean will be selected, but this time we want the condition to be when the value is false. Because this transition is pointed in the opposite direction, we are now able to lead our active animation state from the walking state back to the idle state. However, in play mode, pressing W still results in our character indefinitely walking. This is because the value of the parameter stored in the animator controller is never updated through our code. So when we currently press W, our code is setting the parameter true, but when we release the key, it stays true. Let's fix this. Beneath our previous code, we'll write nearly the exact same conditional statement as before. The difference now is that we're going to put an exclamation mark before the condition, and we'll set the boolean value to false. The exclamation mark means not. So now you can interpret our code as if the player is not pressing W, then we want to set the isWalking boolean to false. Awesome. Before we leave our code, let's quickly refactor or simplify our code for better performance. We are reusing nearly identical conditional code here, so we can save this value to a new variable so that Unity does not need to execute the same function twice. We'll say the boolean forward press is equal to input.getKey with w passed in as the parameter. We can then replace our conditional logic with this new forward press variable. And now the input.getKey function is only performed once. Additionally, we don't need to continuously set our isWalking parameter to be true if it already is. Let's add an additional condition to make sure we're only setting the value when we need to. We'll use animator.getBool and pass in isWalking as a parameter, and we'll store that in a local variable of the same name. In our if statements, we can say if we're not walking and our player presses forward, then we should set the value to be true. And if we are walking and the player stops pressing forward, then set the value to be false. The last change we'll make to increase performance is to use the animator string to hash function. By setting a variable of type integer, we can replace our string parameters of is walking with the stored version of a simpler data type. With our changes in place, let's press play and see the results. You'll notice now that when we press W, our character moves, and when we release, our character stops. Now that we know how to use transitions, let's attempt to connect our running animation state. We'll start by adding a new parameter. We'll call this one is running. We'll create a new transition to and from the animation state using the is running parameter. Lastly, we'll remove the exit time and modify our code. We'll start by creating a new variable similar to the forward pressed. We'll call it run press. We'll set this variable to the value of input.getKey with left shift being the parameter. This means that if a player is pressing left shift, this boolean will be true. Next, we'll duplicate our conditional logic from before, but instead of just checking to see if the player is pressing the run button, we'll also check to see if they're pressing forward. In this case, we want both. And for our character to stop running, we now want to check to see two possible options, if the player stops pressing the run button or if they stop pressing forward. We can also check to make sure that the player isn't already running before performing this logic. We'll create a variable isRunning and set it equal to the animator.getBool and pass in isRunning as a parameter. Next, we'll add this new condition to our first if statement. If the player is not running and both keys are pressed, then set is running to be true. And in our second if statement, if the player is running and either of the keys are released, set it to be false. And once again, we'll use the animator string to hash function to simplify our code and to increase performance. Awesome, now we have easy control over all three of our animation states. Before we end today's video, let's go back and have a look at some of the other settings available for transitions. 
As previously mentioned, we have toggles for solo and mute. Mute will disable a transition completely. So even if you are walking and attempt to run, the walking state will remain the active state, whereas solo will only play this transition. We can demonstrate this by disconnecting the transition from walk to run and create a new transition from idle to run. Entering play mode, we'll notice that our character will no longer walk by pressing W. And if we attempt to run by pressing both W and our left shift, the animation will play. Let's take a look at transition duration. We'll notice how if we set the property to zero, the animations become significantly snappier, whereas a longer transition will add additional blend frames between the two animations. Transition offset determines where we want the animation to start from a 0 to 100% basis, normalized to a 0 to 1 value. So if we want to start 25% of the way into an animation, we would use 0.25. The last setting we'll talk about today is interruption. Interruption allows you to switch animations mid-transition. So if we are currently in the idle state and we're switching to the walking state and we have a long transition between the two, the setting would allow us to switch to the running state mid-transition. And this would only work if we chose the next state as the option because we're going from the current state of idle to the next state of walking and our running animation state is connected to the walking animation state. If we set the interruption to none, the full transition will have to take place. Similarly, in our example, the current state is idle, and we don't have a direct transition between idle and running. So if we select the current state option, the full transition will have to play. In the next video, we'll take a look at an alternative way to connect our animations using flow parameters and blend trees. And as the series continues, we'll learn to retarget our animations to our own characters and get them moving in 3D space. As always, if you learned something new today, please consider subscribing to the channel. It really helps me out and lets me know that we're headed in the right direction. That's all for today. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.